In February 2006, a small number of Funky Dragon representatives volunteered to tell the United Nations about children's rights in Wales. They formed a steering group which guided every step of a project that was to become bigger than anyone thought possible. By the time they had finished, 14,000 children and young people had been asked for their views and the steering group had presented their report to the cabinets of the Welsh Assembly Government. In June 2008, they achieved their main aim when they gave evidence to the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child. In September 2008, Education Minister Jane Hutt spoke about their report's influence on decision-making at the heart of the devolved government. I think when Ben and Chris actually came to our Cabinet Committee, and I remember the First Minister saying to me, that was extraordinary when they gave their presentation how articulate and confident they were. But I said to them, just come and tell us three things you think we should do. You came and you said those three things, and of course we have got to take those away, and now we have to act on them, Ben, and you have to hold, them to hold us to account. Funky Dragon took two reports to the United Nations. The children's report was called Why Do People's Ages Go Up, Not Down? And the young people's report was called Our Rights, Our Story. This is the story of how they were written. Funky Dragon is a children and young people's assembly for Wales. It is a young people-led organisation which aims to give under 25 the opportunity to try and get their voices heard on decisions which affect them. This is a fundamental right under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Funky Dragon represents as wide a range of views as possible and works with decision makers in order to achieve change. Funky Dragon's main task is to make sure that the views of children and young people in Wales are heard, particularly by the Welsh Assembly Government, and to support participation in decision making at national level. It's known as a peer-led organisation, uh, so it means it's run by young people, for young people, to promote young people's voice and opinions. There's a long history dating back to 1998, when uh, a group of young people thought it would be a good idea to have a national platform for young people to uh, speak, to express their views to what was then the newly established Welsh Assembly. We have a Grand Council made up of a hundred young people and then uh, those young people come from various youth forums, youth councils, uh, organisations, specific interest groups from across Wales and what we try and do then is, is work to achieve change. The UNCRC is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and it's a list of 42 rights that every child, every person under the age of 18 has. Um, so far all of the countries bar two in the UN have signed up for it and agreed to give the right, give children in their country all these rights. Well, being heard, it's all about young people being heard. I think that's the most important thing to be honest, is that young people know about the UNCRC and you know we get more get more out of it. Just very simple ones like the right to education, the right to play, the right to uh, choose your own religion without parents forcing you to to go a certain way and things like that so they, they spread from a very very wide range to everyday lifestyle to to maybe part-time jobs or education how you're treated in schools okay so the UNCRC is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child but why have we got a convention have a look at this the children's rights movement started at the beginning of the 20th century this was after Europe had been mangled by the First World War people still disagree about why it but in 1914, all the most powerful countries in the world gathered their healthy young people together, lined them up on opposing sides of the battlefield, and sent them rushing in at each other's bullets and bayonets. Nine million people died in the fight in over the next five years, and millions of kids across Europe were made orphans. Eglatine Jeb, a teacher from England, was so disgusted by the slaughter, she decided to dedicate her life to campaigning for children's rights. She helped found Save the Children, and wrote the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which attempted to pressure those governments which had survived the war into protecting children. The winners of the war, minus America, founded the League of Nations, which they said was a way to guarantee peace and help prevent world wars from happening.
On the positive side, in 1924, the League adopted Jeb's Declaration of the Rights of the Child. But they totally failed in their main mission. Afraid that Europe would go communist if they intervened, the League did nothing to prevent fascists from taking power. First, Mussolini in Italy, then Hitler in Germany, then Franco in Spain, gained control of their governments and acted with open aggression against all other countries and their own people. Inevitably, World War II broke out, again with the parent killing and the carnage. This time, even more millions of people were killed in the First World War, even more children orphaned. Anyone who the Nazis decided were from the wrong race or religion or held wrong political beliefs was sent to concentration camps, either to be worked to death at hard labour or to be herded into underground chambers and gassed. Hitler was defeated in 1945 and the governments of Russia, the United Kingdom, France and other winners, including this time America, formed the United Nations, whose purpose they said was to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The United Nations has survived until the present day and is one of the main places that the children's rights movement applies pressure in its campaigns. After the war, the UN immediately adopted Eglatine's declaration, expanding it in 1959 to a list of 10 rights. It took 30 years before the next major result, when in 1989 they adopted the much longer Convention on the Rights of the Child, which also lays down how the government of each country has to report back on children's rights. Every five years, every state party needs to report back to the United Nations on what they're doing for children's rights in their own country. The United Nations recognises that uh, governments may not always have the information and may not always be forthcoming in that information. So with every government they meet, they also have a second group of non-governmental organisations, NGOs, that come along and the NGOs then present their case. Further to that, 12 countries have also had some form of representation from children and young people. In Japan, five young people submitted essays. The Indian working children, um, they just commented on the State Party report and presented it in accordance with a clear-cut framework. Belgium, a report was compiled by a steering group. The ACYA youth group made a video recording. Germany sent a questionnaire to 120,000 children and young people. I think, you know, the committee can listen to people like me and they can listen to other adults. But unless they listen to children and young people, they won't really know what the story is, you know, just how well things are going for children and young people in Wales. So very, very important indeed that children go to the UN committee. In February 2006, having decided they wanted to submit a report, the next thing Funky Dragon did was establish a steering group. Um, I'm Erica Borney, I'm from Pretend I'm a Funky Dragon, and I'm here because I'm part of the steering group to prepare a report on the UNCRC. The report is um, young people's reaction to the UNCRC and what they think about it and how many people actually really know about it. We're people who take part in councils, who take part in, in consultations and, and I didn't know about it and I've been a member of a youth council and a school council and all things like that. I'm involved in lots of extra things and I'd never heard of it. The steering group is a small number, around uh, 12 to 14 of the young people who said they're going to take on this project and they're going to look to... The, the main question is how are young people in Wales claiming their rights and they're going to look to how they, they gather the answers around that. And so they're working with uh, academics from Swansea University, so uh, Antonella and Kevin, and they're trying to, trying to work out how they're going to ask these questions and then when they get all these answers back, then what are they going to do with them in order that they can then make a presentation that is more representative to the committee. The aims of the objectives are to get at least 7,500 young people's opinions, um, to produce a report with quantitative and qualitative data by next year's AGM or towards the end of the year, we're not sure of the, the ending yet, and to inform as many young people as we can about UNCRC in the process. But that's basically it, I think. 
The steering group wanted to see how much they could learn from other people's experiences. So in April 2006, they travelled to Belgium to talk to UNICEF, who had submitted children's evidence for the previous round of reporting. We're here this week, these three days, to establish how we are going to effectively uh, research and collect views from the young people of Wales on the UNCRC. We were in uh, the, the, main, the main city, Brussels. We were based in there. Uh, it was only for a few days and we didn't, didn't have a lot of, kind of chance to really see, but we, uh, the first day we spent in the Welsh Assembly offices just to sit down and say, right, this is what we've got to do. Uh, we've got to produce this report to report back on the rights and, and how we're going to do it. So we kind of developed the ways we were going to research it and things like that. We spent a lot of time um, with the young people from Brussels talking to them how they did their report. And then from those two days we managed to decide how we're going to do the report and how we're going to go forward with the group. And we've built a lot of chocolate. And we've had a very good time and bought a lot of chocolate <laughs> and we're all happy but we all want to go home. The things we're going to be looking at from Belgium is the what did you do? What did you learn? Uh, what did you bring? What would you bring back to Wales? Chocolate. But <laughs> 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 well, unfortunately, there was no chocolate brought back, was there? Uh, there was. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't get any of it. <laughs> think of what we did all together. We went to the assembly. There wasn't that many of us. I think we just worked. And we together. visited the project. The I learned what, how much, how much work it is, you know what I mean? How much you might, you know, you bring on the go all the time. At this stage, we're in the process of asking, well, what are we going to ask young people? We recognise that the majority of young people in Wales won't have heard of the convention, and maybe they won't know that they have rights but they do know what their lives are like and what we're trying to work out is how we can ask young people questions that they can then relate that to the convention. There's a big thing about telling people about the UNCRC because it was we could ask them about what they've done and then t tell them and then it would be like well so and so a thousand people didn't know what it was but it's alright we told them what it was you know because so you want to tell them, but on the other hand... If you asked a thousand people and they all said no, well that's in itself quite valuable. But if you asked a thousand people and they all said no, but when you left they knew what it was, that has more value. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it still doesn't spoil your research because you asked the question before. There was quite some controversy over whether it should be an arrow. Um, range or a wide range, I seem to remember. So to ask a broad range of questions first, mm -hmm. and then if lots of people say similar things, we'll ask um, narrow questions on those few points. Because um, yep. the other group wrote up on there, keep the research narrow, but I, d I didn't think we agreed with that. So mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is, is produce something, as, as has already been said, that's kind of boring and is not interesting to anybody or is just like... 50 tables of a million numbers, which nobody really knows what it means. What well, we have clip art. <laughs> but what you want to do with it, I mean, communication is, is really important with all of this, as is, is up on you know, the lessons of, of, of what you brought back. But what you want to be able to do is to, to communicate what you find out to, to everybody that needs to be able to understand it in a way that they can understand it. Basically, Funky Dragon with the Our Rights Our Story group, steering group, are only working with 11 to 18 year olds. Of course, we were missing out the 0 to 10s. Because there isn't a Grand Council or there wasn't a steering group for the under 11s, we had to go on what the Our Rights Our Story steering group had already decided. Um, so we used the same themes that they were using, but of course, we adapted the ways the workshops were carried out so that they would be more fun, I suppose is one way to call it, and creative for the under 11s and to engage that age range a bit more. Some of the activities we did um, were craft based, um, some were acting and role play, 
we tried to get as many different ways as possible for children to give their views, to try and give that spectrum of different ways that children like to learn and to develop and to play. The children's workers went out to primary schools, after school clubs, play schemes, wherever under 11s were going to be, and then just got involved in what was going on and got the, young, got the children involved as well. Most popular craft-based uh, workshop we run was on education. Um, we give every child in the class or the group a white plain uh, mask and on the back of the mask they would have to write if I was head teacher I would and finish the sentence and then they got to decorate their masks in the grand theme of head teachers which usually involved feathers and sequins. Because the themes were the same then hopefully it shows that the under 11s do need to be given their own platform to be able to express their views because the answers that came out were very different. I went to one school down in Cardiff with a year five class around the nine years old mark, some ten, and they took to the project completely. They completely understood the project, the aims, they completely understood children's rights, why they were important and it stimulated massive discussions on what laws do we have and you know if they kind of knew other, they'd done other work so that you know they couldn't understand if a right to a home is a right, why is it that still so many children in Wales are homeless? So that, that was actually quite memorable for me because they took it to quite some philosophical levels of understanding. As well as demonstrating that children are more than capable of giving their opinions, um, I think the most important thing as well is to show that, sh uh, that's come out of the report, shows that play is a very important part of children's lives. And some people could say, well, yeah, that's obvious but um, it's about where they play and how they play as well and access to play. Um, one of the activities was to draw where's your favourite place to play. We did the research with over 2,500 children and 93% of them had set, uh, put in their pictures somewhere an open space, whether it was in the local park or on the street or whatever, it was outside. So that just shows that children just want to be outside running, making their own play up without defined barriers or constructs or anything that says you must do it this way. Next time I think it'd be much better if we had a bit more time to include children in the initial planning process so give children the scope to decide what rights and themes they wanted in the report and how they would like to see them taken forward. We didn't want it to be too worker-led, so we could have put a really serious name on it, like a research report from six to ten-year-olds in Wales on the UNCRC, and we didn't want to do that, but because we didn't have a steering group of children, we couldn't ask them what to call it. So uh, one of the sessions was, you know, what do you want to find out about anything at all? How do you know? What do you want to know? And one of, them put, one of the questions was, why do people's ages go up and not down? But there were loads of questions that came out of it and loads of various names you could have used, such as what's a wow about scissors and why is SpongeBob SquarePants a, sponge, a kitchen sponge when everyone else in SpongeBob SquarePants is a sea-related creature? I thought that was a fabulous name, but if people get why do people's ears go up not down wrong, I can't even begin to imagine what type of variations we'd have had on that. I think the reports have had a really positive impact. I mean, firstly, the UN committee themselves took what children and young people said very seriously indeed. And the concluding observations from the UN committee largely reflect, I think, some of the issues that children and young people directly were saying to the committee. But they've also had a broad impact across uh, a number of agencies in Wales, including the Welsh Assembly Government. The Young People's Report was divided into four sections. Health, Education, Participation, and information. The children's report had two additional sections, play and environment. At every stage the Grand Council were kept informed of developments. Over 10,009 <laughs> young people took part all over Wales, two schools and every local authority in Wales took part. And these are some of the questions that were asked, and this is only a short amount. Do you think young people should be allowed to vote at the age of 16? And four or five answered 
yes to being able to vote at the age of 16, so that's quite a large majority, 82.6%. There was slightly more female with 53.19%. Nearly twice as many allowed to 13 year olds to part than 14 to 19 year olds. Nearly 25% spoke fluent Welsh and 72%. So they can speak Welsh but not fluent. Well done, all of you. <laughs> Do you live in a more rural area, which is a good split, 51.5% urban, 48.5% to rural, so that's really good. <laughs> the power of those reports is based solely on the fact that this is children and young people speaking it as it is in their own experience and in their own words. That's really powerful stuff. And when children and young people speak with one voice on clear issues, um, people listen and that's really important. When the analysis was complete, the steering group got down to writing the report. This took place over a long, cold weekend in a haunted castle just north of Port Albert. Seriously. I've been here since the beginning, like back back in the day. How long ago was it? Like two years? February last year, was it? Oh my yeah, God. February last year we started and then April yeah. last year we went to Belgium. Yeah, well, I've been, I've been to Belgium with the steering group and I've been to like every residential to talk about the contribution to the workshops and the national surveys and collated results. They went to Wrexham to work with Rachel to work out the demographics and stuff like that. And the lovely little bits of information, yeah, and the launch in North Wales, where I presented um, presentations about what we've done so far. Um, <laughs> I meet this weekend to um, look over the uh, research and analyse it and decide what's going to go into the report and what's not. All the project workers are writing the report up next week, so we're just going through to find out the most interesting data from all the research and I'm grouping it together within the themes so that the report can be written next week before it goes out to printing. Looking at the uh, statistics and going through, making sure that we get everything done in time. Um, writing down recommendations to be put forward for the final report. Just making sure all the loose ends are tied up. And what are the recommendations based on? They're based on fact, not conjecture. <laughs> I've learned so much over the last few weeks and, well, few, few months really, then it's unbelievable. But yeah, trying to find out all the information and working out the cross tabs and what's an important point and what isn't and trying to decide from all the information which bits of it will be useful for the project and which bits are good or bad for Wales. Chi. Uh, Kai. Kai. Kai Square. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? Um, probability. Sampling. Sampling and... Triangulation. Stratification. That's it. <laughs> At the first weekend, I didn't realise how much research we'd be doing, um, and I didn't realise the scale of it, and which like um, getting involved with other countries, like how we're linking up with England and Scotland, and how it's going to be sent as a UK report. And I've learned so much more about the United Nations and um, our rights as young people. I think it's really good that other people have been able to learn from that as well. When we've been doing workshops and national surveys, I think the knowledge that other young people have learned from us researching them is really good. What happens next at this point? Mm. Um, here. We write the report and we launch the report and we do a media launch of the report and then we cut down the report like substantially to about like seven pages or whatever we've got and then we go to Geneva and present it to the UN. Uh, I've just swallowed a fly. Um, we launch it, don't we? And then we go to Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the best thing about the Oros project for you? Um, that something that Funky Dragon and that the Oros group is actually doing is going to go all the way to Geneva and maybe actually make a big difference. Well, I hope that the you know the bureaucrats and the politicians in the assembly will take notice and. Uh, try and improve the way that young people are able to participate in Wales. I mean, there's a whole negative culture about young people across Britain. We do live in a goldfish bowl in Wales, you know. Young people are maybe gathering outside a shop for five minutes, I mean, and then people moan to me. I see plenty of old people gathering out of shops, and they could be as likely to beat me up as anyone else. So those grannies with their walking sticks. It's going to be very important, I think, for policy makers in Wales to demonstrate that they've listened to what children and young people have said. And the real way that they can demonstrate that they've listened is by actually changing the policies to reflect the priorities that children and young people have made themselves. Once the report was completed, it was presented to the Welsh Assembly Government and the Children's Commissioner. 
Meetings were then arranged to discuss the findings. Your report's having... My, my understanding is that your report's having more impact on people who are working in Wales than any of the other reports because it's the power of what children and young people are saying directly, which people want to get hold of. Now, one of the things that struck me in your report, but has struck me is I'm now in the fourth month as a children's commissioner, and um, it, the thing that kind of strikes you really strongly is how few children and young people know that a commissioner exists, um, and how few children and young people actually know about either the UNCLC or the fact that they've got rights, we were very mm -hmm. careful in, in the, the national survey not to, to go around and there was a big question about when we, when we asked this question about the UNCRC and go, have you ever heard of it, then if people say no, kind of what happens, what do we what do? We do? do we tell them about it or yeah. that, that kind of thing. So it, yeah. we, we did make the recommendation because every, I mean, most children go to school and if the mm. UNCRC is taught in schools then most children will have access to it. One of the other big what, big opportunities is when they what they call the rapporteurs when they come we're trying to make sure that they come to Wales and so I think there's another there's the presentation but there's also another opportunity I think which is when the rapporteurs come because then we'll have an opportunity to talk to them a bit more informally mm -hmm. um, about some of those experiences. So the first thing uh, we thought we'd like to do is, is as you know we're going to Geneva in yes. a week and a half or what some of us are. Yes. <laughs> Not bitter at all, I promise. <laughs> Beckham and Ben presenting. So uh, we thought that it might be a, a good thing with mm. your kind of okay um, to do uh, the like five minute presentation that they're going to be doing to the UN. Okay, this is like a draft version because we just had a meeting with um, Children's yeah. Commissioner Kevin. Keith. Kevin. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, I shouldn't really be going. Um, <laughs> and um, good morning slash afternoon. My name is Rebecca Harris and this is Ben Sawyers and we're both members of a young pe people steering group which designed and led research in Wales and produced the Our Rights, Our Story report and the Why Do People's Ages Go Up and Not Down report. Our research includes the voices and experiences of over 14,000 young people and children and today we aim to highlight the most powerful messages from those. Our research showed that only 1% of young people have been talked about the UNCRC. Considering the UK government has been committed to the Convention since 1991, we consider this low number to be shocking. In September 2008, new personal social education guidelines will come into action in Wales, which mention the... I think they'll be most impressed by Rebecca and Ben. Very, very good. A lot, a lot, you crammed an awful lot in, isn't that? It was four and a half minutes. That was excellent. I was just going to make one comment, sort of going back to the beginning of today, is that um, I'm thinking about my cabinet committee, and I was just wondering, I know it's after you've been to, uh, to, to Geneva, but um, whether or not we could, um, Rebecca and Ben could come to the beginning of the cabinet committee and um, give their presentation. I'm hoping it's not uh, that the reports aren't seen as an end in themselves. I think the reports are a starting point. Um, they're a really fantastic starting point, but we've got to build from here. So I think what we need to be seeing is a process that's alive and makes a difference so that children and young people can see that things have changed as a result of those reports being written. The main reason for the report, of course, was to give evidence to the United Nations. This took place in June of 2008. The highlights of the trip were shown at the National Assembly for Wales in September of that year. We're now going to he uh, see and hear the DVD of the Frankie Dragon Young People's Visit to Geneva in June, where they presented Our Rights, Our Story uh, and the report to the UN Committee. So, the DVD of that visit. Where are we going? Geneva! Not bad. To meet with the UN. What are you going to be doing, Ben? Going into the UN with Rebecca. Yeah. And telling the UN the good stuff we've done in Wales and the stuff we need to work 
gone. Tell me about the good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Looking forward to it? It's all right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I went to this joke out this morning. I go fresh and burn. <laughs> What, to the end? what do you think of the big fountain? It's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> well, since I joined the uh, steering group, I'm more clear on what rights I've got and what rights young people have got all over Wales. I'm wet! Really? <laughs> United Nations in Geneva. Woo! Are you in Geneva? Yes. No, we're not. Big Geneva building. We're in Simpleton Park. <laughs> <laughs> this is a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Graphs, writing, graphs, more writing, more graphs. Why did you choose this? I don't know, because I've realised that it was the big thing for Funky Dragon. In the sense of how much young people we consulted, how much work we done, how much money we spent. <laughs> you know, that stuff. Um, and has it been? Has it, has it been everything you thought it was going to be? Definitely and more. Um, I think it's important because not many young people get to go and give evidence to the UN. And I think it's important because we've been like involved in the project and we know all about it. Like more than another like outsider person would or could read about. We know what we've done and what we haven't done and the limits of the research. So yeah, me and the... Uh... Beck and Chris will be going into the UN. Me and Beck will be doing the, you know. You prepared? Mm. Yeah. I have cue cards. Okay. And what's, your bit, what's your bit going to be? Bullying. <laughs> Knowing about the UNCRC and PSE lessons in school. And what about bullying? Knowing the UNCRC, PSE lessons in school and play. Well, bullying, 48% of young people, no, 46% of young people have been bullied which is almost half. Play, 93% of children and young people just wanted a green space to play. No one about the UNCRC, as I've gone on and on, only 8% know, which is shocking. And PSE isn't actually in there, I lied. We started with each of the um, nations giving a presentation on what their main results were. We were limited to five minutes, so we quickly went through our main findings, and then we went round the committee and they each asked like a big load of questions of what they wanted answered and how we went about the report and everything. We're in President Wilson, which is the UN, one of the UN buildings. Um, behind me, we've got Rebecca and Ben and uh, the Scottish and English people in with the formal, uh, doing the formal presentations and I'm here um, waiting for Ben and Rebecca and all the rest of us so we can do the informal presentations. Ding, 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 round two. <laughs> My favourite part of today must have been the initial going into it all, really excited. I think it was just because, you know, we've done all the work. This is crunch time, get in there and do your best. The best part of the day? Um, probably the informal bit when we were talking to all the ministers. Um, even though we were short on time and there were lots of people to talk, it was still good. Just because we could talk on a more one-to-one -one basis on, our, on each of the reports and we could say <laughs> what was the most important bits of them all. Obviously, the best part for me was going into the informal session. What, what did you like about that? Um, well, 
most of the young people got to get their voices heard. Um, every every nation got to present their presentations. Um, yeah, but I'd, I'd say the you know that's what the main part of the day was for me is that I went in and I give my voice across what I thought young people of Wales would do. What recommendations would you like to see the committee making? The compulsory teaching of the UNCRC in PSE frameworks with training provided for teachers and the check of anti-bullying policies in all schools working alongside with the Welsh Assembly Government. They would be my main two priorities. What have you got out of this process? Personally. Uh, personally, a much better knowledge of the UNCRC, definitely. And knowing more about not just the UNCRC but rights in general for young people and policy in Wales and being able to talk to more officials with no nerves and just like realise that my opinion does matter. Well, follow that. Thinking about it now, I mean, some of you got an insight to what the staff were doing at the time. Was that enough? Did the people who went feed back to the rest of you? You might have all kinds of thoughts like that, and thoughts about how you might want to do it differently. So what I've got is I've written all of those ideas down on a piece of paper, and I thought rather than just have a discussion, because you've all just had lunch, I'll give you post-it notes. If you want to speak to the people around you in small groups, you've got a little group there, a couple of you there, join yeah, groups here, or, or join others. Have a, have a bit of a discussion, and um, if you can put it down on post-its, if we don't get it down on post-its, we, we might not capture it, okay? And then we'll just, we'll just go through them at the end and see if there's any additional ones. There'll be things in between meetings, because there was that time when everybody wanted the Yahoo group, and then when we put the Yahoo group together, nobody actually read it, and then said, go back and send us emails again. Well, I don't know about other groups, but every time we came up with something, we made sure that there were facts and figures to back it up. And if, if there were things in there that, uh, so Steve was talking about his school council, and if we couldn't find anything in the research that matched it, it didn't go in. Um, once every term, they just call us together and they say what they're going to do. And, and, uh, and uh, they just said, this is what we're going to do, do you agree? And someone said no. Overall, because the because the deaf teacher was had a terrible so. There's a teacher. So why isn't any of this in your recommendations then about that? Because that's just one case. And that for us was a very hard and difficult phase of it. Once the reports have been submitted, the committee writes a set of recommendations. During this writing up process, they like to visit the respective countries wherever possible. The person who does this is called a rapporteur. Lucy Smith visited Wales to speak to members of the Funky Dragon Steering Group, as well as other groups of children. She also spoke to the other organisations which had submitted reports. I'm uh, delighted that Lucy Smith is with us as the rapporteur for GB, Great Britain, um, uh, for the UNCRC, but I'm also equally pleased to welcome uh, Jane Hutt as the Minister responsible for education and also responsible for children and I'm very very pleased that we have so many children here as well and adults that are involved in the area of children and children's rights in particular Keith Towler the children's commissioner and really what we want Lucy to be doing is to talk to the maximum number of young people all over Wales to understand uh, a what they feel what they think in different areas of Wales um, and then uh, to think what we as adults should be doing in partnership with those children to create the kind of um, uh, the, the kind of Wales that uses the devolution potential to the full and creates the kind of Wales that children will be proud to grow up in. First of all, I'd like to welcome Lucy Smith. Uh, I'm a <laughs> member of the UN Committee then, uh, of um, Children's Rights, and we are a group of 18 people. And we have, uh, first we speak 
with people like you and uh, NGOs and uh, UNICEF and so on. And then later we had a dialogue with uh, the delegation from the countries we are reviewing. This reporting process to the UN on the Convention on the Rights of the Child provides me as the incoming Children's Commissioner with the framework for me to take forward over the next five to seven years. It's really, I think, a significant and important opportunity. I know we didn't plan it this way, but it's fantastic to be a Children's Commissioner coming in as the new Commissioner at the point at which we're reporting to you in the UN about how well we're doing on the rights of the child. It's fantastic too that you, for the first time, the first time ever, a UK rapporteur has actually come and visited Wales. Ben and Becca, please. Yeah, okay. Basically, the, the, like, the main point from play was... If you involve the children and young people in the initial planning of the park, there won't be as much vandalism because they'll feel that they have ownership of the park. This happened in East Talbot where I campaigned for a park and because I got the community to sign a petition, they didn't vandalise it. Isn't that good, Rebecca? I think that's brilliant, but... <laughs> in East Talbot, <laughs> they started zoning the new parks to have a young person's side and a children's side, where the young person's side has stuff like... Sure. Just like a bus shelter and a graffiti wall, and the children's side has play park items such as a seesaw, a swing, and the classic slide. <laughs> we understand that the Welsh Assembly Government have lots of play policies already in place for children in Wales, but and about how it's important to learn through play. But we just wanted the Welsh Assembly Government to extend that to out of school learning as well and out of school playtime and weekends and holidays. In all the play policies, there's no um, black and white procedure that says you must consult or you should consult with children and young people. Mm. So we think maybe the policy should include this. What I now need to do as the Children's Commissioner, the work that you're doing, Lucy, is going to be really important to that, helping to shape how I need to think things through. Listening to what children and young people are saying is the key element of that. We had a figure, is it 41%? 42%, no, 45%. 45. There it is. 46%, that's what it was. Of people <laughs> saying that they've been bullied or felt they've been bullied um, within their schools. And we, we took a look at other people's figures. We took a look at the um, 0607 reports from Childline. Yeah, so 30, 30 which is a high figure, as is ours. Ours is higher. But then we also left it up to the people we were researching to define bullying. Exactly, exactly so. If you feel bullied, you are bullied. That's right. Have you any examples of schools where they have succeeded better than others? We have county, we, we, we looked at the figures that came back from the Welsh Assembly of which, um, which schools handed back um, anti-bullying policies from which individual counties and overall the more urban the county, say Cardiff, um, Swansea, handed in more satisfactory and more often they handed in um, an anti-bullying policy. We also thought that um, by the the, um, the reviewing and the creation of the policies being done by young people would also aid the prevention of bullying. It has been uh, a, a great thing for me to come to Wales for the first time. I saw yesterday the valleys, that was interesting, and to meet uh, Frankie Dragon, which I have met before, some of them, was also a great experience. We would ask the Welsh Assembly Government to look to include the UNCRC in uh, existing and future professional training. We feel perturbed and confused <laughs> as to why people are working face to face uh, with children don't have to understand the UNCRC. I don't know where you could use the word agency, but like, make it sound a bit more. Basically, if a professional is doing a, a course on working with children and people, surely that the convention should be involved in that in that training. I can't see how you would not mention it. The other point that you made there, which is an interest, is training of not just teachers but professionals, people who work with children and young people. I mean, it certainly struck me in my five months as the commissioner 
that actually so few people know about the UNCRC. I think that was in the report as well, that, that yeah. not, not a lot of, not yeah. the report, but the, there was something on that a lot of professionals didn't know what the convention was. Mm. So. One of the interesting things for me to meet children is to hear really um, what they experience themselves in school, for example. <coughs> as a, uh, do the school democracy work well in your school? Uh, or do is it just a window dressing or something that? Well, I think we're going to address that with part we're going to talk about participation, participation yes. and a large chunk of that is school councils, people democracy. So, who's got conclusion so far on participation is <laughs> to be better. Good, but could be better. Uh, there is decisions coming through, just not major ones that affect young people more in respect like oh, we want a new school, this is how the school should be built, that's a big one, maybe, because certain things at the moment, it's just like, fair enough, where to go on school trips? Okay, it's not really a big one as such. What's the purpose of a school? To teach and learn. To teach and learn. There's a thing about what they learn or how they taught this, it's not that. Well, the, if, if what you're saying, the primary purpose of a school is to teach and learn, then the decisions that we found that people are involved in aren't to do with the, the secondary the secondary rather than primary. Secondary. Lots of school councils, even though they they have to be set up by law, do not run in a proper way. So schools say yes we've got a school council, they might meet once every six weeks, every two months, whatever. And um, they don't actually do anything that affects the school or or things like that and lots of young people don't actually know who their representatives are from the classroom who go up onto the school council. Many young people who are involved in the school councils they feel that their meeting times are inappropriate because of break times and lunch times. That's against the guidelines of school councils. What do you say now? That's the school councils and meeting times. Yeah. They're inappropriate because at break time or at lunch time okay. instead of being at times mm. which are better suited for them. And this means that you know, the meetings are shorter, so that less can happen. What, what, I, what I would like to say is actually that um, I'm sure you will be disappointed when you read uh, our report, because we have, there's so and so many pages. Yeah. And uh, we cannot go into details. But what is important for me is to hear what you... Uh, to hear because the government says that it's so and so, mm -hmm. and then I have spoken to you, and you say that, for example, school democracy isn't working really. And what I um, think I learned from the day we had this uh, pre-session, uh, it seemed to me that the attitude toward children was more positive in Wales than in England, for example. Yeah. The areas of concern that concern me the most. The areas where child rights are at the most extreme in terms of things not happening well. When you think about the asylum process, you think about children in youth justice, you think about issues around child poverty, you think about um, issues to do with you know, the physical punishment of children, smacking of children. All of those things are things that are the responsibility of the UK government. Mm -hmm. I think, Ben, I can assure you that it was a great privilege to be with you and Rebecca as part of the delegation, and you did do your best. And I think that really being in Geneva and being part of the delegation to the pre-sessional hearing was a real demonstration of our achievements, our achievements collectively in Wales for children's rights. But most importantly, and what I was proudest of being in Geneva with, was the Funky Dragon reports and the immense amount of work that Funky Dragon have done in producing fantastic quality research to present to the committee. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child actually underpins all our policy. We turn that into our seven key aims for policy across the Assembly Government. But it's underpinned, and as Ben says, um, if we can make sure that everybody, every local authority, every school, every, every public organisation looks to the UN Convention and says, right, are our policies and more importantly are how we deliver our services geared to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, then we know that we are part of a global attempt to uh, promote social justice, health and well-being, 
um, for our children and young people. I think Rebecca, Ben and Chris, um, you know what it's like to come, to go to Geneva, to come and talk to our cabinet. We want young people, children and young people in Wales to have those kinds of opportunities and to have that confidence and to channel that information and their, and their views through to us. In five years time we'll all go back to the UN again and we'll report again but what we've got to see is things happening as a result of all of this work. This is a live process. Those reports mustn't sit on the shelf. We've got to read them, we've got to act on them and we've got to really make sure that we don't let down children and young people. These reports are the biggest and most wide-ranging of their kind ever written in the United Kingdom. They have revealed an accurate and detailed picture of children's rights in Wales. The Welsh Assembly Government is using them to inform its policy making for the next five years. That they are the work of a group of young people who had never done anything like this before is remarkable in itself that they are the beginning of a process of change based on the views and opinions of the children of Wales is nothing short of revolutionary. Yeah, it's, the young, it's young people in the media. And the right to have weather's fine. For more information about a wide range of programmes featured on Community Channel, go to communitychannel.org or call 08708 505 500.